All right, so this is the video for TECM 3200 lab uh, week four. So today what we're going to do is we're going to cover um, links, images, IDs and classes, and then put together a navigation bar. Um, it won't be fully functional quite yet because we haven't created all of the pages um, that we would populate the navigation bar with. Um, but you'll have the sort of uh, technical background to actually create that navigation bar once you have all your pages in place. Um, so just before we get started, as a reminder, um, sort of about where we're at, let's take a look at um, what we have in week three. So this is what we've completed in week three. Um, this is what, um, for the most part, you should be comfortable with creating. Um, so we talked about headers, so we've got an H1 and an H2 here. Um, we've talked about inserting paragraphs, um, so here's some paragraph text here. We talked about unordered lists, so here's an example of an unordered list here. Um, and then we talked about ordered lists, so here's an example of an ordered list. Okay, and so to add to this, we're going to then um, talk about adding links and adding images to our page. Okay, so. One of the big things that I want you to understand is the differences between the term web page and website. Okay, so um, it, you, it may not be readily apparent what those differences are, uh, but a web page is a single HTML page. Um, so, for example, this page that we have here that's got our you know beginnings of a resume uh, versus a website, which is a group of web pages that are linked together. Okay, so your portfolio will have more than one web page. It'll have three or four or five or six web pages, um, and they'll be all connected together. Um, so really the idea then is how do we connect these things together? And the way that we connect these things together is through links. Okay, so that's, this is a really important sort of lesson um, this week because now we're going to start to connect things together. So the whole idea of the Internet is not single pieces of web pages, but how do we connect these web pages with other web pages um, or other websites, okay? So let's start with um, uh, putting some links into our page. Okay, so here is um, what our HTML should look like after week three. Um, I just wanna first start with an example of a simple link. So I'm gonna put a link into google.com. Okay, so we're just going to create a link to google.com. Google and to, to put a link into your web page, we use what's called the anchor tag or the A tag. Um, so that's how you open up an anchor tag. And this is different than other tags that we're used to because it's got what's called um, a required attribute. Okay, so there's something that we need to describe this anchor tag. Um, and the required attribute for our anchor tag is what's called the href tag, um, or the href attribute, uh, which stands uh, literally for hypertext reference. Okay, so now we're just saying we want to reference some kind of hypertext here. We want to put some kind of URL here. Um, so we are going to put um, an equal sign, a quotation mark, and then we'll enter our hypertext reference, which is simply just a URL. Okay, so here's our anchor tag, here's our hypertext reference, that's an attribute, um, and here is uh, the actual reference, google.com. Okay, um, and then what will actually appear on the screen as a link um, is what you enter between the opening and closing of the anchor tag. Okay, so since we're linking to Google here, I've put Google in between the opening uh, anchor tag and the closing anchor tag, okay? Um, so it works just like any other tag in HTML. Every tag that opens must close, um, but it's a little bit different in that you've got this attribute content here um, to actually tell it where to go, um, okay? So this is the first time we're actually making some connections onto our web page. So I'm gonna save this um, and we're going to open up open it up and see what happens. Um, and you can see here at the top of the screen, we've got, um, I'm going to blow this up a little. Uh, we've got 
we've entered our tag above every, all the rest of the content. So you can see um, that our tag here to Google, or our link here to Google, is appearing before any of this content. Okay, so when you actually click that, it should take you to Google, and it does. Okay, so that's an example of um, a link tag, or an anchor tag. So we've linked to a website, in this case, Google. Okay, so again, um, what we have between the opening and closing of the anchor tag is the word Google. So if we change this to um, something else, not Google, that's what would appear. So we changed it to not Google. So that's what appears on the screen as a link. Okay, but it's still linked to Google. Okay. Um, so that's how you would implement a tag. You've got the A, the anchor, or a link, I'm sorry. And then you've got the href. So I'm going to take this out because that's not all that useful for us. But I'm going to do something that we've yet to do. Um, and that's show you sort of how to um, nest an anchor tag or a link inside of another tag. So you're going to do this a lot in websites. You'll see this a lot in websites. Um, you'll see links inside of other elements. And namely, you'll usually see links inside of list items. Okay, um, So I'm going to link to the University of Illinois here um, inside of our list. So right now, it's just a list item. It's, if you go to the actual page, you can't click on it. It's not a link or anything. But we want to make it a link to the actual University of Illinois website. Okay. So to do that, we would do just the exact same thing um, as we did with our Google link, but we'll do it with our Illinois link. Okay, So we would open up our anchor tag. We would add our hypertext reference, which is illinois.edu. Okay? And we want to close our... Uh, anchor tag after Il University of Illinois. Okay, So there's a couple things I want to point out here. First, we can embed anchor tags inside of other tags. When you nest tags, here's a rule of HTML. Every, when you nest tags, tags close in the opposite order in which they open. Okay, I'm going to say that one more time. When we nest tags, Tags close in the opposite order in which they open. Okay, so our list tag here opened first. That means it closes, closes last. Our A tag opens next or second. That means it closes first. Okay, so again, tags close in the opposite uh, order that they open. Okay, so that'll be important, especially when you've got more than one tag nested inside of another tag. Okay, so let's take a look at our updated version here. So you can see we've got we still have this all within our list item, but it's now a link to the University of Illinois website that you can see here. Okay? So you can see how this would be very useful. Um, we're just going to quickly do the same thing with um, our Illinois Institute of Technology. Okay, so we'll do our anchor tag, our hypertext reference, iit.edu, okay? And then we would close our anchor tag again before we closed our list tag. So this is the new information that we've added. So just real quickly, let me refresh. And so the same thing again. So we've got um, our U of I list and link. Now we've got our IIT list and link. And when you click it, it takes you to IIT.edu. Okay. So again, examples of nesting a link inside of a list tag. Okay. The next thing I want to show you before we get into IDs and classes is inserting an image. Okay. So images, now we're starting to get into some visual content we can actually start to make things a little bit more um, visually interesting. We haven't really got into CSS yet, so we can't style things, but we can still add 
visual content and images. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add an image um, just at the very top of our page again, just like we did with um, our Google link earlier. Um, so there's a couple things that we're, we're going to do. I've already saved a image file in my folder that I've got all of my HTML pages, and it's called unt.gif. Okay, so it's just a it's an image, a GIF file of the UNT logo. Okay, you'll have to save an image in the same folder in which your HTML pages are located. And we'll talk more about relative linking and absolute linking uh, in class and, and later. I won't explain all of that now, but just if you're having trouble ha getting an image to show up or appear in on your web page, it's likely due to the fact that you don't have the image located in the same folder as your HTML files. So make sure your images are located in the same folder as your HTML files. Okay, so image tags. The image tag is IMG, short for image. Okay, um, and so just like our href tag or our a tag or our anchor tag has an attribute called hypertext reference, our image tag has an attribute called source. Okay, so we want to specify a source or a location for our image. Okay. So the source of our image is unt.gif. I showed you that. Um, I showed you that uh, where it was located earlier in my folder here, unt.gif. Okay. We can't just end it here, though. Um, so image tags, there's a few things that you have to have in an image tag. And one is what's called the alt tag. And the alt tag is... Uh, primarily used for accessibility purposes. So um, for people that have um, sight issues, sometimes they'll use things called screen readers. And screen readers will actually read through all of the content of a website um, audibly for someone with some sight issues. Um, and so what it does with images is it will read through the alternate um, image description. Okay, so our alt uh, attribute, we want to put something like UNT Eagle logo. Okay, so that they'll know at least this is where the UNT Eagle logo is. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to show you with an image tag is it's what's called a self closing tag. Okay, so all other tags like H1, for example actually have the content in between the opening and closing of the tag, right? So you've got H1 opened, and then you've got the content, the word resume, and then we've got the closing tag uh, of H1. In the instances of an image, we don't have that because we don't actually put the image on the HTML page. We just link to the source of the image here, right? Um, so it needs to close somehow. It's called a self-closing tag. So it opens and closes all in one tag. So to do that, you just put a space after the last quotation mark. You put a forward slash, and then you close up, close it out. So this is a fully valid image tag. Okay. So let's take a look at that image tag and see what it looks like on our page. Okay. So it's really big. really big, okay? Um, but it's there at the top of the page. So there's a couple things we can do. Um, we can set the height and the width of our image inside of the image tag, okay? So we can set height, um, and it's usually done in pixels. So let's say we want it 50 pixels, and our width, we want it 50 pixels. So we just want sort of a square. Let's see what that looks like. Right, so now it's a little bit smaller, or a lot bit smaller. We can even, okay, we can decide that's not quite big enough. And we can change it 
and make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so now we've got an image. We our thing is a little bit more visually interesting. Okay, and so there's reasons why we would want to set the height and the width in our HTML page versus a CSS page. And so I'm not going to go through all of sort of the nuanced reasons, but here's why you might want to do that. Okay, you might want to set your height and width in your HTML page if you are using uh, the image once and only once, right? So like if you've got, if you just want to use this UNT logo up in the upper left side corner of your, of your page, for example, and it only appears once and only once, then it might be a good idea to just set the height and the width in your HTML page. Now, if for example, you've got a and let me just show you an example of what this looks like. If you've got something like a portfolio page where you've got a group of images, right? So in this example, here's a portfolio page of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13 images, right? And they're all sort of the same. They're not sort of. They're all the same format. They're the same height and width. They've got this little box shadow on there. Right, so if you're, if you're going to create like an image gallery where you've got multiple images and they're all going to be styled the same way, you probably don't want to set your height and width on them for each image in your HTML page. Okay? So instead you would want to create a style in CSS, which we'll talk about next week, and, and apply it to all 13 of these images instead of putting the height and width on 13 of them separately, right? So you could see why that would be an issue if you wanted to change. You decided, okay, these are too small. We want to make them a little bit bigger. You would have to make that change 13 times in HTML, whereas if you did it in CSS, you would only need to make that change once. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. Um, it should make more sense as we talk about CSS more. Um, but yeah, so we can set the height and the width in HTML. Typically, it's okay if you've only if you're only putting that image once on your page. Um, but if you have like an image gallery, again, we're going to want to use CSS to style those images. Okay, so we've got our UNT image here um, showing up at the top left corner of our page. Okay, um, so we've talked about images, we've talked about links. Let's talk about IDs and classes really quickly. And I won't get into this too much. We're going to talk about this a whole lot more when we get into CSS. But I just want to introduce you to the concept of IDs and classes. Okay, So an ID is a unique identifier for any given um, HTML element. Okay, So an ID is a way to say this HTML this HTML element is unique. Um, so let me just pull up an example. Um, let's take a look at some source code actually. I'll try to blow this up for you. Um, okay, so we've got some classes and IDs. Okay, so let me just quickly talk you through the differences between IDs and classes. Okay, um, so we've got three columns here, right? And I want these columns to look a certain way, right? So I want this column to be, I don't know, 300 pixels wide. I want this column to be 350 pixels wide. And I want this column to be 300 pixels, right? So there's some unique things that I want to, unique styles that I want to apply to each of these three columns. And so I would then assign an ID to this column so that I can say I want this 300 pixels wide. And I would set assign a separate ID called middle column to this column and say I want this 400 pixels wide. Okay, So what IDs do is they allow us to make sp specific design choices for 
specific HTML elements. Okay, so IDs are unique identifiers. We typically reserve IDs if and only if we're going to use um, that HTML element one time on the page. It's a unique element. Versus a class, you can think of it like a class of students. It's a group of elements, right? So let's say I want um, all of my paragraph text to look a certain way on this page. We can make a class for the all of the paragraph text, right? So not just we don't want our paragraph text in our left column to look different than our paragraph text in our middle column. We want it to look all the same, right? And so in that case, we could assign a class to that paragraph text, okay? There's reasons why we'd want to do this. Um, it's not going to make much sense until we really start to get into CSS, but let me just show you really quickly um, what, this, what this looks like just in terms of uh, sheer... Uh, the, the actual technical syntax. Okay, so let's just say we want to add a special ID to H1. Okay, so H1 ID, and you can put anything inside of your quotation marks here, right? So when we assign names to IDs and classes, we just want to make them um, mean something. We want to use some sort of label um, so that they mean something special. Okay, so let's go header home. Okay, so in this case, we've created a new category of tag for H1. Okay, we've created it called header home. Right, so now in our CSS, we could say we want just this we want just H1s with the ID header home to look a certain way, right? We want it to look green, 28 point font times New Roman, okay? So we can make a specific item look a certain way, okay? Versus a class, um, so let's say header to home, if we wanted our class of if we wanted a class of certain elements to look a certain way, um, we we could assign them a new um, identifier. So in this case, all header twos on this page we want to look a specific way. So we've called them header two home, right? So you can call these whatever you want, but I'm just saying I want all the header twos on my home page to look a certain way, right? And so that would make a big difference. So let's say you've got a web page, a website with 10 pages, right? On, across those 10 pages, your H2 or your header two is going to be used quite often, right? So maybe just for your resume page or your home page you want your header two to look a certain way and you want that header two to look differently than the other nine pages right and so that in that case we have to assign a new value um, to our header twos right so if we don't assign a new value to our header twos if we remove these all header twos on all 10 pages will look the same okay so that's what IDs and head, uh, classes do. They allow us to create new values. They essentially allow you to create an infinite number of tags, right? So there's a finite number of tags that work in HTML, right? Like H1, paragraph, um, UL, LI, right? So these are a finite number of tags to describe our content, but there may be an infinite number of ways that you want to actually design that. Right? So I want my lists to look a certain way on my resume page, but I want them to look different on my portfolio page. Right? So how do we make that happen? There's only a finite number of lists uh, tags, but we can use IDs and classes, um, IDs or classes, to say, okay, we're going to create new types of lists, subtypes of lists. Right? So we want to create a subtype of list. Um, just for our resume, right? So maybe we create an ID called resume list versus 
on a different page, we might create an ID called portfolio list. Okay, so that's IDs and classes. We'll, you'll use these extensively once we start to work with CSS more. The last thing I want to do is I want to insert a navigation bar, okay? And navigation bars um, are simply uh, list a list of links, okay? We can make them look like navigation bars when we use CSS, but for our HTML purposes, they're just a list of links. So if you, if we take a look at If we take a look at uh, this portfolio page and we take off our CSS, we can see that my navigation bar is simply a list of links, home, CV, portfolio, and connect. Okay, so it's a list with um, anchor tags embedded inside of them, right? So if we turn our CSS back on, you can see it looks actually much different with the CSS turned on, but in HTML all it is, is a list of links. Okay, so let's add a list of links uh, for our navigation bar. So navigation bars in uh, HTML5 can be marked up with um, the nav tag. So they actually created a tag just for navigation bars in HTML5, which is great. So every tag that opens must close. And so inside of our nav tag, we just want to put a list of uh, navigation bar items, right? So we want to put our UL, which is our unordered list, and inside we just want to put a list of things, right? So maybe you've got a home page, you've got a resume page, and these this will be, differ for all of your different sites. Um, you've got a portfolio page and you've got a contact page. Okay, so we've got a list of links um, inside of our nav. So our nav opens here, it closes here. Our uh, unordered list opens here. We forgot to close our unordered list. Okay, so we've got a list of links um, and we want to add what we're missing now is actual um, links or anchor tags, right? So as we learned earlier, we can add anchor tags inside of lists with our a, a tag. And this would probably be home.html, but we actually don't have a page called home.html, right? So these none of these pages actually exist yet, except for resume, right? Resume is the only page that we've created, um, and it's actually not a real resume page yet. So what we can do is we can put a pound sign in between our quotation marks. And that just means there's a placeholder there, okay? So that means eventually we're going to put home.html in, in the quotation marks here, but we don't have home.html. We haven't created those pages yet. But when we do, we'll put them in there. But for now, we will just put this pound sign in. Okay, so we want to do that for all of our pages, right? And so, same thing for all of our pages. Once we get, once we create a resume.html, we'll put it in between quotations. Once we create a portfolio, we'll create, we'll put it in between the quotations. Okay, and we're going to close our anchor tag just like we did above. Okay, so. This is what a, in HTML, this is what a navigation bar looks like, right? It doesn't look special or um, doesn't look any different than the anchor tags that we included here. Uh, they're just wrapped inside of a nav tag, okay? So we've got one, two, three, four levels of tags nested, right? So we've got our nav, nav tag with our unordered list nested inside, with our list tag nested inside, with our anchor tag nested inside, okay? So you can kind of see the hierarchy um, there. But let's take a look at our new found navigation bar, okay? So now we've got a navigation bar, home, resume, contact, and portfolio. And right, and so since we put just pound signs inside of the anchor tags, they're not gonna go anywhere. 
but they just are acting as links. Um, okay, so just as a quick review, we added an image, we added a navigation bar. Um, you know, you now know how to create links. So we've got a link to different places, um, and we talked briefly, or maybe too long, about IDs and classes. We'll talk more about that um, in future sessions.